a punk rock version. Good morning, children, and welcome to the first ever PureMix.net Punk Rock Christmas Spectacular. Today we have the immense honor of having DCO, dry clean only, or my favorite and probably only punk rock band <laughs> ever. And what we're going to do today is we're going to play all your and our uh, Christmas, well, they are going to play, I'm just going to geek over there, uh, Christmas song favorites, um, punk rock style which means this is going to go really quickly, so don't blink, all right? Uh, tempos <laughs> are wonderful. It's, it's fun. So, um, and as I said earlier, it seems that today the band's very lit. Uh, so am I. And um, that's it. So for the geekery, you know, what microphone is on what, we'll do that after the show in 48 seconds. Um, <laughs> it's about it. So what's, the, what's the first song? The first song is I'm Getting Nothing for Christmas. That uh, sounds like a good start. So uh, I'll need a second to go to the control room to uh, make sure that everything's on. And, uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll um, you know, hit the talk button and say, a one, <laughs> yeah. a two. OK. Hey, Papi. Really need that swing. <coughs> it's all about swing. No one said anything about a swung intro. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you all ready? We're yep. ready. We're ready. It's the most wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Well, mommy and daddy are mad. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. This one is a personal favorite. <laughs> is it? No. <laughs> 
You know a dancer and dancer, prancer and vixen, comet and cupid, the most famous reindeer of them all. Like I'm rubbing Santa's belly. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's the next song about grandma? Dude, speaking, I don't know where my grandma is. I haven't seen her in like three days. I haven't seen her since she left for the store. <laughs> I know. That's exactly where she is. And I, I bought her like a really nice Christmas present. I had it sitting on the steps. Ron, Ron knows. Sorry. Ron, I do know. I remember where grandma Where'd she go? Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Walking on. Such thing as Santa Well as for me and Grandpa we believe She been drinking too much eggnog And we begged her not to know it But she forgot her medication Daughter 
is on the table And the pudding made of pig And a blue and silver candle Who would have just matched the hair on grandma's wig Well, I warn all my friends and neighbors They better watch out for themselves Just tuning in, I hope you got a hot cocoa and you're all uh, cozied up by the fire. Should I tell my Christmas story, Joe? Hey, Con, I was wondering, yeah, yeah, what, what's like your favorite Christmas memory, like my good Christmas lesson for everyone out there listening? All right, so this so one Christmas, uh, I was about eight years old and uh, I was hanging out with my great grandmother. She's a bit of a drinker. Um, and uh, she told me that my parents were going out to get me a Christmas present. Roads were super icy. Um, they were taking a long time. So I was wondering, I was asking, Grandma, where's Mom and Dad? She told me they probably slipped off and crashed and would never come back. Um, I was terrified. I, I fell asleep eventually. And woke up Christmas morning to see my parents holding a box. And uh, I really wanted to learn the meaning of Christmas. And I was so happy to see my live parents. I opened the box, and there was a, a dead Don't like talking about it, man. It was like super messed up, man. There's a lot of people here. We shouldn't bring it up, guys. No, we should. Be. I know you're bringing up my mom again. <laughs> she kissed Santa Claus one time, and that was a whole thing. It always comes back. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. She was kissing him, bro. Now that that's out of our system. All kissing over him. him. Wow. That was a quickie, but a goodie. How you feeling, Ron? How you feeling, Joe? I feel great. Feel great? 
I feel so good. It's because you're here, you know? And you're just like so spectacular right now. Christmas monster. You are the spectacular How's part doing of the Christmas I wonder how many people are watching this right now. Hi, Mom. <laughs> she's not watching it. No, she's, not, she's, she's, not, she's, not, she's definitely not watching you, dude. Love you, Mom. That's a good one. I think I do. So cute. So that little gnome on your shirt is just. Let's show show everybody. Make sure you, everyone can see. Oh no! Yeah, this is Walter. Make sure that's Walter. <laughs> this one's sexy. Santa it's probably the sexiest Christmas song I've ever heard. This song. This song is the sexiest Christmas song you ever heard. Yeah, I mean, think of it. It's After so hot. this, let's go back to my house. I'll show okay. you something. Okay, cool.
That's how it's, uh, I just blew Fab a little kiss, you know? Blew him a kiss? Yeah, he deserves it. Can I give him one? You, um, I don't know. I might be jealous. Am I allowed to? Uh, get jealous. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 am I all the way at the bottom, like usual? <laughs> that, that was hard. Uh, <laughs> this is better than our last song. Oh, better than last song, yeah. This we wrote one, this one. We wrote. This is an original. The song's called Little Bernie's Christmas. Joe? Little Bernie. Why don't you bless us? Cats carving up tinsel from the tree And every present wrapped was small Ending in Y instead of ending in I-E And I know there's no such thing as Santa Claus Mom and Dad won't keep in touch And I don't think I ask much But that the snow won't melt And turn to slush like last Christmas Christmas. Merry oh, Christmas, everyone. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You put a, oh, that happened. All right, this time you get better strings. That's what happens when you're in Last song, it's okay. <laughs> ask, for, ask Santa for some new strings. You broke that string? How does one do that? I think it's real thick, too. <laughs> All right. So thanks for watching our first ever and potentially yearly uh, Christmas punk rock spectacular because considering the amount of work they put into uh, putting this together, there's no way they're only going to play this show once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no way. So, I, I um, can't get these lights off. <laughs> uh, and now they're actually part of you they're, now. They're stuck on <laughs> That's me. That's it. Yep. It's good luck. I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> Wait five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so we promised, I promised, I didn't promise it loud, but I promised it, that we would geek out on, on, the, um, on the sound of this amazing punk rock Christmas spectacular. The idea for me was to, whoa, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. You good? Uh, the power is not going to follow you. Um, so 
the idea was to keep it as raw as possible. Uh, so it didn't sound, didn't have, the idea was not to get the usual definition or anything. It was just to keep it uh, as delightfully messy as it was in the room. Um, and so to do so, we uh, kept it very simple on the micing. Um, it's very dark in here, um, except of course for c for Connor. <laughs> oh, you want me to come stand there, right? <laughs> yeah. Could you bring some light to the yeah, matter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's gonna be better. Hold on one second, guys. We found a source, a free source of light. <laughs> it's battery powered. Look at this. If you hang me upside down, yeah. I do better. Okay. Can you put your head near the microphone? There yeah, you go. Right. Look, it works. So we have here a 57 on the cone. <laughs> 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 so. Thanks, Connor. That's oh, great. Oh, am I good here? Yeah, Yo, you're great. You're great. You're great. Are you comfortable? I'm you can, very comfortable. Well, you can stay here if you want. Uh, can I live here? I don't have a place to <laughs> it's go after you, this. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> no problem. You can keep the lights. Okay, <laughs> so so it's just a 57. There's nothing groundbreaking, but um, it did the job. And, um, you know, it's a telly. What kind of telly is that? That's a Nashville Tex-Mex. Nashville Tex-Mex. Deluxe. Of course, deluxe. everything you do is deluxe. And then you, go, you went through the full tone. I was surprised by the sound. It was a lot duller than I thought it was going to be, but uh, that's the sound. So rock and roll. Yeah. Um, and then and then it's you know standard AC30, which today miraculously is not broken. Um, um, so that's it for the guitar. This is just one mic. I'll show you what I did over there later when we grow up. And then <coughs> for the drums, uh, actually Josh picked the mics because I was dealing with other things. So it's our standard uh, Flux Edition. Um, two 421s on the tom, a name 88 on the low tom, and then on the kick drum, we did um, an old D12 inside and a Yamaha sub kick outside, and that worked out pretty nice. I was able to get a lot of boom, and it was nice and buoyant. There's no back head on the drum because it sounds fatter that way. Plus, we've been doing sessions with DCO here for many times, and every time we try, with both heads and after a while we removed the head so yep. today they came with a drum without a head on it which is this is nice thank you guys mm -hmm. uh, and then a pair of clarions on all the heads uh, which I mostly use to um, to because you may or may not have noticed that there was um, some loud cymbal playing so I, I didn't use much of the overhead except to put them in as a mess in the parallel compression system there's no uh, hi-hat microphone and there's no bottom uh, snare microphone. There is, however, <coughs> what we call the, the POW, which is a gift that um, Vance Powell gave me last time I was in Nashville. It's an old um, uh, bullet microphone for um, harmonica, which we, we use to put on the drums because it sounds awful in a deli delicate and wonderful kind of way. And then, uh, then what else? Then, oh yeah, <coughs> on bass, uh, would use our B12, standard edition B12, which uh, Connor likes to keep very bright, uh, as you may have noticed. And then there's a FET 47, and that's going straight to the console. For the vocals, we had two OM5s, which is our Audixes for the background vocals. Although, Ron, you didn't sing much. A little bit. Next time, no microphone. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, standard, our standard SM7. Uh, for Joey, you may have noticed that there was a little bit of bleed, smidgen, uh, maybe due to the fact that the decibel level here was uh, on the on the offensive side of loud, but not as loud as it would have been if I hadn't asked Joey to turn it down. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. This uh, what is it like? It's like uh, 12, 12 microphones. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, and then uh, what we did is we we're gonna go over there in the other room and we're gonna look at the console and geek out further. Hi, Ben. Hello. <coughs> I thought it went all right. All right, so. Thank you so much. Let me mute this. Uh, OK, so as you saw, the 12 microphones kick in, kicks up, yeah. snare top, three toms, two overheads, the POW, the 47 on the bass, 47 FET on the bass. Uh, the 57 on the guitar, which I won't do again because it was not my favorite, but it was actually kind of uh, style accurate. And then the SM7 on the vocal. So the other thing we did uh, using the, the console is uh, first for the echo, we used my friend Damon's um, old 
tube tape echo in the full tone it's actually a re-edition i love the sound of this thing it sounds pretty much broken at all times which is great um and then um the emt plate we have a 140 so i use that for the for the reverb that's the reverb you heard uh so that sound on the vocal was the the tape echo very loudly and a little bit of the reverb the tape echo considering that everybody's in the same room and that it was loud as hell you get tape echo on everything and yes the tempo has changed i didn't change the tempo i was busy trying to do a balance uh what else did we do okay <clears throat> the kick and the snare have parallel uh, paths i'm using bus a for the kick parallel and bus b for the snare parallel and those are going to a pair of distressors over there the kick is the top one and the snare is the bottom one and the uh, the amount of compression was altogether offensive and the idea was to make it even messier and not too dry and not too defined i wanted to be like a buoyant mess and those come back on channels here uh, so that's the return of the distressor for the kick and the return of the distressor for the snare and that's you know high passed and i may have use the high pass to adjust the phase between the kick and its and its parallel compression because i don't have a phase adjustment in in the analog domain but using the, the high pass filter you can tailor the sound and also because of the you know the filter you can actually kind of change the phase relationship between the two so i, I did that apparently and it happened quickly because i don't remember doing it um, the other thing we did for the drums is uh, i used the Q system on this console, which is pre Q1 and Q2, and I use Q1 as a left sand and Q2 as a right sand to go into uh, uh, what did we end up using? Oh, a pair of Day King Fed 2s right here, and these are um, for the whole kit, parallel compression for the whole kit, and I brought them back on this um, on this pair of channels, and I put them in the middle, so it says mono and powerful in the middle. Uh, you may have heard some little crackling during the during the session, and that is something is wrong. Either we just which we discovered the moment we pressed go live, uh, either in the Q system sand or in the Q system return, which we will investigate just right now. So going to the parallel drum bus, we have the kick, and since I wanted to be in the middle, I sent to Q1 and to Q2 the snare. Q1 and Q2, and then if you go down a little, and then the overhead, as I mentioned over, uh, before, go the overhead to the right goes to Q1 to go on the left, and Q2 to go on the right, and voila. And at the time, I thought I was going to use it stereo, but in the end, I brought it back mono because I felt the stereo was kind of sounding a little pretty, and that was definitely not the point of the day. Uh, what else? <coughs> Bass, straight through, nothing. Guitar, straight through, just gain. A little bit of EQ to try and make it fatter, but that wasn't Joey's vibe today. So I just kept it the way he wanted it over there. Uh, and then the voice. So the voice, we had the LA2 inserted over there. And the LA2 was doing like anywhere between uh, 3 to 7 dBs of compression. Uh, just so I didn't have to write the faders so much because I had so, much, so many other things to, to do. Um, and that's it. And I went straight. And then, of course, using these two sends to send to the EMT and the tape. And then Connor's voice, same thing, just straight, no compression, nothing. A little bit of high end and a little bit of the tape echo. And then the whole console has another set of buses right here. They are mono, but, you know, let's not be detail oriented. And um, uh, what I did is uh, I used sand um, buses, C and D, which here becomes three and four because we had to pilfer some it's complicated anyway so this this bus <laughs> goes to a, a SSL um, just an SSL bus compressor uh, and it's uh, it's it's like um, like we do in mixing like you've seen on pure mix videos Andrew do a lot so I call it real bus so that everybody here knows what it is because they all watch the videos and they all know what it is so if I call it a parallel mix bus it would be complicated but if I call it real bus people understand what it is, so I call it Real Bus. And if you're a geek that watches Pure Mix and watches Andrew's videos or my videos, you understand what the Real Bus is. So to go to the Real Bus, I'm actually using um, this, this uh, strict mono buses. But since I wanted it to be to sound really kind of like crusty, 
I didn't use the stereo tricks. I put everything in mono and just crushed it and put it back under. And then, so all that came through here. And then you notice this uh, sense right here. If you're not distracted by the Christmas lights, that is, uh, are sending all these. This, I mix this in real time. So the output of the EQs went to Pro Tools and the output of Pro Tools came back and I was able to mix here in real time. And the output of the main console is here. And that was fed to uh, 33609, doing a, just a little bit, like maybe two to, two to three dBs, just keeping it together. And then that was fed to um, this Neumann stereo EQ uh, called a PEA, PEV, PEA is in my world, this is a PEV, which is a fantastic sounding, like super transistory, beautiful um, two mix com uh, EQ for real men because the, the one step is 3 dB steps. So you have to decide that that's really what you want because 3 dB steps is pretty intense. So I had plus three at 10K, I had plus three at the 100 Hertz and then plus two at 5.6K. So it did the whole like smiley curve thing and uh, it allowed us to use a lot less EQ on the console because 3 dB at 10K on the two mix is pretty for real men, especially in a situation where you have no idea what's gonna hit you from B to B. You know, he may um, not get lean on the microphone, he may lean back from the microphone, he may sing louder or softer. He, his guitar sound changed every eight bars depending on how hard he was playing it because the, the, the pedal was reacting differently. So <coughs> you have to be zen and ready for anything. So, <coughs> but it's a fun way to spend Christmas. So this was our first ever PureMix.net punk rock Christmas spectacular with DCO playing our favorite Christmas songs, punk rock style, high tempo, with some extra language inserted. Thank you so much for watching, and um, thanks for watching PureMix. See you no later than very soon. Ciao.